Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to test a heat pump thermostat with a multimeter. So right now we have this uh, air handler control board uh, plugged in, all right, and we are sending 24 volts to the thermostat. So we have our thermostat wires attached into our heat pump thermostat. Just so you know, this R wire right here, that's 24 volt power that goes to the thermostat and supplies power, and it finds its way back through the common wire over here, which is C. So that's how the thermostat's being powered. It doesn't need the C wire in order to power the thermostat because if you have batteries in here, then you do not need the C wire. However, you do need to have this R 24 volt power wire coming into the thermostat. So R is 24 volt power, W right here, that is for heat. Uh, that would be your emergency heat or your auxiliary heat. And just so you know, on this board right here, there's a jumper back behind here. Since this jumper is in place, this W1 and W2 are actually connected. Right over here, we see Y slash Y2 for a single speed uh, heat pump. This is what you'd use for a two speed. You could use Y1 and Y2, uh, Y, Y2. So this one, we're using single speed setup. So Y means compressor. All right, G right here, that is fan. And O, that's reversing valve, and C is common. This wiring with the O reversing valve would be for most major manufacturers because we're powering the reversing valve actually in cooling mode. And you're going to see that in a minute. So right now we're actually powering for cooling right now. You see that it says cool on. We're going to turn our multimeter onto volts. And that sine wave means it's uh, volts AC. We're going to turn the light on. This multimeter is a DL479. Basically the same thing as a DL469. This one, you have the option of taking a temperature reading with this one as well. And right now we're going to check our voltage. So we always have 24 volts in the control board between R and common. So you see we have 28 volts right there. So anytime that you have a good power supply, you're going to have anywhere from 24 to 29 volts. Presently we have 28.1 volts. So uh, we can verify that we are sending voltage to the thermostat by reading the indoor air handler control board right here. If you don't have a control board at your indoor air handler, it'll be wire nuts that you're reading that out of. So anyway, R comes into the thermostat, and since we're on cooling and we have the temperature lower than what it actually is in the room, then you're going to see what we're next powering. We're actually connecting inside the thermostat. R is connecting to O, R is connecting to G, and R is connecting to Y. So, once these come back, if R is connected to Y, that means that right now from Y to C we have 24 volts. Okay? So we're always going to refer to this as 24 volts even though it's 28 volts. So we have power there. R is connected to G because it needs the fan. So you see that it's powered there, 28 volts. And R is also powered to O, reversing valve. And once again you see that 24 volts. Alright, so we know that we are calling for cooling and the thermostat's operating correctly because we're sending power correctly. Now let's turn this off and we no longer have 24 volt power between Y in common, G in common, or O in common. That was all happening because the thermostat was connecting all of those together with the R wire. So now let's just go ahead and turn on the fan only. So that means that R is connected to G and G is coming back and we should have 24 volts over here indicated by our 28 volts. So we have 28 volts now because our uh, fan is on on. All right, so that's how we verify that our thermostat's act actually working properly. 28 volts. So now if we turn the thermostat to heat, you see it's now 60 in the room and we have the thermostat set at 61. Well, we just had cooling on, and then we turned it off, and then now we're turning it on to heat. So what's happening here, you see this heat on, it's flashing. It's not going to automatically turn the heat pump in the reversed mode and, and provide heat in the house. So if this thermostat is only calling for one degree above uh, what it is in the room, this thermostat's going to run the heat pump only. It's not going to run the auxiliary heat. And it's definitely not going to run the emergency heat because you don't have it set on emergency heat right now down here. So the reason for that, a five minute delay is actually there to protect the outdoor compressor. So you have a low side and a high side pressure on the sides of the compressor. What happens is during that five minutes, the low side and the high side 
are equalizing and becoming the same pressure again on both sides of the compressor. So it, the compressor needs both refrigerant sides to be equalized in order to turn on again, and then you can go low side and high side again. So that five minutes is crucial for the compressor safety. If you just tried to turn it from cooling and straight into heat, uh, and the compressor shut off, the compressor is going to have a hard time trying to turn back on again. And that's going to end up hurting the compressor. So that's why we're waiting for this five minute delay with this heat on flashing. So the temperature in the room went up to 61, I set it to 62, five minutes has now passed, heat is on, so R is now touching Y, and we can confirm that by reading right here, from Y to C, and we see that we are reading 28 volts. Also, if we put our probe on G, we got 28 volts. So we are presently calling for heat, and that is correct, and we should not have any voltage on the O right now. So that means we don't have our 24 volts on the O, and that is correct. So the thermostat is sending voltage correctly to the indoor control board. So now if we want to test auxiliary heat, we're going to turn this several degrees up higher. And then we should have our auxiliary heat turn on. When our auxiliary heat turns on, then we're going to be able to test from W to common. We're going to get 24 volts because R comes into the thermostat and now touches... W and it comes back to here it touches Y still because the heat pump is running but you also have auxiliary heat running as well and R touches G so we're going to go ahead and read that now so 28 volts for that for that W and we still have our 28 volts on Y we still have 28 volts on G and we do not have any voltage on O which is correct in this case, that auxiliary heat could be uh, electric resistance, it could be a hot water coil, uh, something along those lines. Now we're going to turn on emergency heat. So now we should not have any power connecting to Y. Basically all that's happening now is R is coming into the thermostat, it's touching W, and it's touching G, and it's coming back to G and to W over here. So we're going to go ahead and take our readings now. We got 28 volts there. We should not have any voltage on the Y because the compressor should not be running now. And we should have 28 volts once again on the G. So that's how that works. A couple tips are if you need six wires for a single speed heat pump, I would suggest running 18 gauge eight wire or 18 gauge 10 wire. If you see that black and brown wire right down there, those would be in case any of these other wires are not functioning properly. You could always switch that wire out and use it to, say, switch out the, the blue wire or switch out the red wire if there was a problem in the future. As well, those two wires right there could be used as outdoor temperature sensors. So my recommendation is always to run 1810 wire for heat pumps. You could get away with 188. You could even get away with 186. Now, if we open this thermostat up, you're going to see that we have a jumper between aux and E. If you had three types of heat, so you had your heat pump for your refrigerant, that's actually heating the house or the building, and then you have your auxiliary heat, say that's a, a hot water coil, and then you had E, meaning electric resistance heat, so you could have three types of heat if you did pull that jumper out. But a lot of times this jumper is left in place so that the electric resistance turns on anytime aux is called or E is called. So that's what I wanted to go over with you today. If you wanted to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech. We're rewarding the members there by adding extra content such as articles, videos, and answering questions. If you're looking for the tools and supplies used in this video, such as the uh, DL479 or the DL469 multimeter and the 24-volt thermostat, I have them all linked down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.